Hi, Jen here from Jen Michelle Coaching, and today I want to talk about why men know when you'll wait. For those of you new to my channel, I would love to invite you to subscribe. I release a video weekly. So let's talk about three behaviors that are obvious on an energetic level, on a gut level, to a man when you are waiting. Number one, you don't make yourself a priority. I see this all the time. This can look like people pleasing. This can look like canceling plans. This can look like a scarcity mindset where you're scared you're gonna miss your chance or just that like fear of missing out. This can look a number of ways where we start to rationalize changing our life to accommodate his. And this is the energy of waiting. And so instead, if you notice that you have those people-pleasing tendencies or that lack and scarcity mindset takes over, I always recommend this to women who I coach that are dating, like keep your plans as they are. He needs to make room to be in your life. And I don't say this in a gamey way, right? Not like in this gamey way where you're playing hard to get, but if you take a yoga class on Wednesdays, you're not canceling it because he invited you over or invited you to do something. You're saying you're staying true to your commitments and you're you're staying warm and open and saying you would love to arrange a different day or you're not free on Wednesday, yet Fridays work really well for you and you're opening up a conversation, but you're not sort of moving your schedule around or forgetting about yourself where your needs and the things that make you feel good are no longer a priority. Number two, you won't rock the boat. You are scared to speak your truth and speak your mind. This is a hard one for many women who are used to um, going along to be likable growing up. And I even remember when I was finding my voice in my marriage, I will definitely ruffle my husband's ego big time. You know, we disagree on certain topics or we just see certain things in life very different ways, but I don't rock the I don't fear rocking the boat, meaning he has to see the real me. I can't put on a persona or alter who I am so he stays happy and loves me, right? Because that would mean I'm just pacifying another's ego. And it's a fake, it has a fake level to the relationship. So instead, he has to be willing to hear my truth and vice versa. I also have to be willing to hear his and for us both to be conscious and to hold space for that without letting it turn into a playground battle um, where we revert to two small children kind of ready to take sides or throw rocks or something at one another. This is really a practice of not being afraid of another strong emotional response. Can you let someone process something that's hard? Or can you let them have um, a lot of anger or a lot of frustration or difficult emotions and trust that they can move through it? Of course, when I talk about this stuff, I'm not talking about abusive partnerships. I'm talking about a healthy relationship dynamic where just normal sort of conflict can, you know, occurs. But can you hold that space for yourself to be true to who you are? Because when we do this, others just acquiesce. It just is, right? But if we're like, is it okay? You know, is it okay that I feel this way? Then, you know, they're going to end up making you, you know, really question what uh, you were believing in and what you hold true within. And so it really is holding that space within yourself. And so it is, right? But if we don't hold that space, it becomes a question mark and a boundary that can be moved. Number three, you fear losing him. So you take less than what it is you know deep down you deserve. This is a big one. So maybe you start to notice little subtle things where he doesn't go out of his way for you. He doesn't um, you know, wanna go the extra mile, pick you up or run to the store and buy that item or spend time to you know, give you his time and attention and ask about your day, but you somehow rationalize it. This sort of love-starved tendency takes over where you just put on your rose-colored glasses and see what you wanna see versus reality of what is and making good, solid, discerning decisions for yourself as a result of that. 
If a woman is love starved, she will rationalize bad behavior and put it on herself. That will be the instinct. But if she's confident and she's empowered and she's conscious, she's not going to do that. She is going to hold the line, right? And so holding the line means you love yourself more than the relationship, full stop, right? In a loving feminine way, but not in a way where you are going to justify taking crumbs or taking less on any level and use it as a way to turn on yourself, right? So this is a practice. Remember, the instinct is for women to internalize, for men to deflect. And so we have to catch those energetic tendencies within and self-adjust to make sure that the instinct matches the situation and go deeper, right? So this is why slowing down in these practices is a really key component. So if you've been dealing with anything like this, practice these three things and I guarantee you, you will see a very different energy and optimism begin to open. And if you would like to learn about me, please visit my site, jenmichellecoaching.com. I have my group list back up and I think I'll be doing the next offering in January. So if you're interested in my group program, please join the waitlist, and you will be the first notified when doors open.